Hope of Liberia, answering the hosting. We are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. And this is Focus on Liberia, where we educate, we elevate, and promote all things Liberia. Hit that share button. The country Liberia has gone through it all. Peace and reconciliation is lacking. If you are wondering why things are the way they are, I have somebody comfortably seated in studio as my guest who has devoted his time pursuing peace and reconciliation in Liberia. He is a peace advocate. And that is why whatever you're doing now, you need to just sit by as you're listening to my guest providing some professional understanding, even from our cultural and historical context, how we can unify this country to keep the peace and have a country that can be that glorious land of liberty that you all want. Hit that share button and let us get started. And as always, we are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia, and this is Focus on Liberia, where we educate, we elevate, and promote all things Liberia and the peace of Liberia accountability and justice and peace must be promoted today. That is why I'm honored to have in my midst as my guest, Dr. Joe Bagba. Dr. Baba, welcome to Focus on Liberia. It's an honor having you and thank you for the work you're doing. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much and thanks for having me. All right, folks, uh, Dr. Joe Baba is our guest and uh, you will hear from him briefly he will share his uh you know profile with us you know who he is and many of you want to know that name is a big name has been around i'll do my little research i realized that he was even he represented liberia in 1989 in abiokuta nigeria mm -hmm. well i will leave it with him to get uh, a little more that again welcome and let us know who you are what has been your life journey that welcome oh thank you so much you know um uh, since we're talking about culture mm -hmm. you know uh well culturally uh, i come from a traditional royal background mm -hmm. uh, because before the establishment of the republic of liberia by free slaves uh, african americans who traveled to africa to uh, establish the modern Republic of Liberia, mm -hmm. we had um, splinter groups, kingdoms, uh, uh, empires of ancient African empires, like Mali, Songhe, Ghana, etc. Mm -hmm. So the governance structure at that time was monarchical form of government. It wasn't a Republican, democratic form of government that we have today. You know, so those days, they, uh, our, our traditional people had well, uh, had kings to rule them, and we inherited that 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 uh, governance structure from our ancestors. You know, in Aksum, in Egypt, Mali, Songhe, etc. So that was what our people were used to, and that's what they are still used to, and that's why the issue about democracy is so foreign and strange to to the liberian people for instance that's why they don't know how to vote they know nothing about referendum you saw the mess that happened in liberia people didn't even understand what a referendum meant and all of that you know so it's a whole lot of stuff but anyway my background i come from a background of rulers and uh, um also my great ancestor was the founder of the city of zwedru uh, Grand Jida County, the capital city of 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 uh, Grand Jida, the Crown people. Mm -hmm. uh, so I come from that that Crown Royal background. My ancestors also were the 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 only group of Crown leaders who had a dynasty. The dynasty system we inherited it from from Egypt, and the dynasty system is where the father is king, he dies, and the son takes over, and you have uh eight conservative members of one family ruling so for instance my ancestors 
They ruled uh, the crown people for over 200 some more years because when the father died, another person would get there. And fortunately for me, my father narrated that information to me and I wrote it down. So I know the names of all my ancestors and all of that. I'm also cousin, uh, cousin, blood cousin relative to some great uh, uh, modern day contemporary crown leaders at Bilabe. Bilabe, uh, um, Bilabe was um, the nephew of my great grandfather. And my, my grandmother was Bilabe's first cousin. Uh, it's a city with Deswa. Deswa is also another big name you know, in crime history, that's why was the first cousin of my grandmother, you know. So we come from that line. And when you talk about Bilabe, Bilabe uh, was the, actually was the messenger of the last king, who was also my great grand uh, uncle, uh, uh, Badwe Jila, King Badwe Jila. He was the last king before they introduced uh, uh, the Western form of government structure in Liberia. And Bilabe was Bari Jola's uh, uh, chief messenger. He was like, you know, like you would say ADC for, 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 for the king. So when, 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 when the king, uh, when he was old and, and wanted to give up power, they asked who should he put there? And he said, well, I want Bilabe to be. So, and, and the reason why I'm saying this is because, you know, we, we, we're not, uh, I'm not the type of person that can be in anybody's pocketbook or that will not say what I got to say to you. And I'm saying this to all Liberians so that they understand that, you know, my conviction and my service to the Liberian people has nothing to do with tribalism. It has nothing to do with, with, with factionalism, but it has something to do with the, the, the rule of law, respect for the constitution, of the Republic of Liberia, because if we are here to the rule of law, you know, nobody is bigger, you know, or, or than the law. Nobody is above the law. If we if we honor that, Liberia will be good. Liberia will be a sweet land of liberty and all of that. And that's why some people are refusing to recognize. They're refusing to respect that. And because they're refusing to respect that, that's why we are suffering. That's why millions of Liberians are suffering today because they're not going by the law. If you go by the law and everybody has equal protection under the law, definitely, you know, uh, we will have a better nation. So my, my, my commitment has been to promoting the history and culture of, of Liberia, you know, for over uh, 46, 47 years now. And that's because, uh, that's because if you don't know your history and your culture, I just told you who my ancestors were. I know who they are. How many of you can do that? I can name my ancestor. I can name my grandmother. Uh, 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 what's that? Uh, uh, um, uh, where, you know, where, you know, father that, uh, uh, what's that? Uh, right, put it, right, put it, mother that, money, do, money, do, mother that, mother that, pretty, pretty, uh, uh, father that, king, uh, 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 you know, Puricelli father that King Bobo, you know, I could go on like that. You see, when, wow. you, when, you, when you know those kinds of things, you feel confident. You know who you are and where you come from. So that's one of the reasons why when people see me, they say, then you, you always look young, you always look this and that because I know who I am. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not struggling, I'm not fighting with identity crisis. Many Liberians are struggling with identity crisis because they don't know who they are. And you'll be amazed that even people who are born in the hinterland, as an educator, when I'm teaching the, the, the youth, you know, uh, 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 working with the college youth and even talking to their acts, and, and they say they're from, from ground crew. I say, oh, you mind you now, for a while. They say, oh. Not, uh, not for this show. Yeah, no, they will, they will not even say that. They say, oh, prof, I know how to speak that thing, though. When you make that kind of expression to somebody like me, from the kind of background that I come from and in, in the way how I've devoted my time to it. It hurts me so much because then I know that indeed, you know, they got a messy education. They got a messy education. So that's why it's important, you know, for, for, for me to stress these things to the Liberian people and to speak to you with authority. Thank so you I God. understand that there's no play play business. 
Thank it's you, not Dad. a pretty thing. Thank you, Dad. Yeah. Uh, the voice of Dr. Joe Bagba. Some people call him Uncle Joe. Some people yes, call him Dr. Bagba. Uh, Dad, again, thank you for the work you continue to do as a peace advocate and educator. He is also a scholar and he has devoted his life to promoting peace and finding reconciliation for Liberia. You heard him there. He's a man deeply rooted in his culture. He's not suffering from identity crisis. But that we brought you in today to talk about reconciliation and accountability in Liberia. Okay. And the reason why these two words, uh, mm -hmm. reconciliation, accountability, peace, these three words became so uh, prominent you know, in a Liberian society because we had a conflict in Liberia. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, help us understand here. We really want to know what is conflict, it kinds, and impact. Tell us. Okay. Uh, first, before we begin, let mm -hmm. me explain to mm -hmm. the world because mm -hmm. I know other nationals are listening to what I'm talking about. Let okay. me explain to the world that um, when you talk about peace, people think that when you talk about peace, you know, you're not some, if somebody, you know, uh, 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 insults you or mm -hmm. throws stone at you, 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 you're supposed to be like, uh, you know, like that so-called biblical stuff that you want to, when they slap your you one ear, you want to put your other ear there. No, that's not what peace is all about. Peace is about, first of all, it's about rule of law. That's the first thing people need to understand, rule of law. If you, if, if, if you, follow, if you follow the Constitution, mm -hmm. if, you, if you respect the law in the country, there will be so much peace you will not believe it. Why? Because in the Constitution, it tells you where your rights begin and where your rights stop. And it tells you where the other person's rights begin and where their rights stop. So that's the first thing, you know, something like in the traffic, you got a red light. The red light is there. When the red light is on, why are you booking the red light? You're booking that red light. If other person who has the green light to come, you know, you're going to go and hit him. And then who's wrong? You're going to say that you are right because you, 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 you're the president of the nation and, you, and you're passing through. Or, or, or the red light, so the person who got uh, uh, access to the green light should stop, you know, and that's that's what, where the confusion is. So that's where that's how people create in, in inequality in, in, in society when you don't obey the law. If if, if, if no matter who you are, if you we are or you 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 Joel or or anybody in, in Liberia, if you if you're driving, you know, and you're not on any emergency. A, a mission or whatever it is when you come to the red light stop tell your 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 driver say driver please obey the red light because the other person who got a green light gotta go because when when you got a red light and this person got a green light they pass it through and you going you're gonna collide then when you collide and you you kill the person and or you you, you injure the person then you're gonna say because you big shot so the person so so nothing will come from out of it that's 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 where the confusion that they come from. That's number one. No, the, the second thing is that uh, 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 Liberian politicians, and I'm, uh, you know, I will, I will I will say this. You know, I will continue to say it for Liberian people to understand because some of the people that Liberians worship are the people who have thrown stones. They throw stones and they hide in the background. I will give you a typical example. In a nation, for instance, where um, uh, uh, during the, the Do era, we mm -hmm. said where Do was a dictator, Do was doing this, and Do was doing that. Well, that's fine for people to speak their mind and to seek, you know, a, 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 a solution, an amicable solution to the problem. So, so even after Do was surreptitiously captured and killed at the Freeport. That created the Naratoba Constitutional. Right. So the president of the nation was killed. He was supposed to be the, the problem for the country. 
right. so the the, the Ghanaian uh, 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 field commander did whatever they did they grabbed him and they killed him okay you kill him there's a vacancy what does the constitution say Emma Sawyer what does the constitution say when the president is dead killed or incapacitated who takes over the, the vice president, president. Mm -hmm. So in a situation like that, where they even went to to Banjo, you know, and they were there lobbying for interim government. Were you lobbying for interim government for the person that was the problem was killed? Okay, Vice President Moniba was alive. Dr. Moniba was alive. What do you do with, with international support? You get the, the Vice President and you swear him in so that he can come end that term send your heart to become president of Liberia, then you have the time to have your election because the dictator is gone. Did they do that? No, no. they did not. These are the people you take to be your heroes and all of that. You must live by what you preach. He taught constitutional, uh, or well, the constitution or whatever it is at the university. He was part of the, 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 the reformation of the, 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 the previous constitution that he did. So why did but, they but that, uh, some people may argue that there was a breakdown of law and order? You know, no the breakdown country was trying to care, so they couldn't the follow that. CB force there to, mm -hmm. to, to help you highly highly manage to take him from 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 Banjo to bring him to to, to rule the place. They couldn't have done that for the for for, for the constitutionally uh, elected uh, 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 vice president to get there. That's how you restore. That's how you you protect democracy. You think when the all the stuff that the stones and things that uh, 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 Trump and his, his supporters they were throwing and go, going to the Capitol uh, when when he was state president and they, they had elected a president uh, uh, in waiting waiting. You think they, 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 if the American people sat down and and, and, and didn't do something about it, they, you think they would have had a, a, a peaceful transition? You gotta you gotta follow the rule of law. They follow the rule of law. We did not. Then, on top of that, if you're talking about peace and reconciliation, yeah, right. on top of that, you go to, to to conferences and you're not making any reference to the constitution of your country and you're creating what you call a court. Abuja, a court, this, a court, this, and that. They're not part of the constitution. Those are not constitutionally binding on the people of the Republic of Liberia. That's not the law. What does the Constitution say when someone someone supports insurrection? It's punished. It's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a treasonous act, punishable by lifetime imprisonment or sometimes death. But these are the same people that 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 that, that, that supported the insurrection and caused all the trouble today. So that's why we we in we in a, a limbo because Liberian people continue to to hail them as heroes. When they are the ones who are killing them, that's that's why the peace process isn't going anywhere because nobody wants to respect the the, the law. I gave you another example. So the international community comes in, and with all the Didiba, because first of all, they don't understand the history and culture of Liberia. So people like us who know the history and culture of Liberia. Who can stand up and speak to the international community and then say, This is it, this is what we want? No, they will not put you on that committee because I'm not part of the, 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 the planning of the, the, the insurrection and I'm supposed to be quote unquote crown. That's one thing like well, well, that, maybe, maybe, maybe you don't want to be a politician and, and politicians always get that opportunity to decide for the others. Yeah, well, I, you, you see that not everybody got to be a politician because that politician thing that you're talking about, you can be, you, you, you know, let me let me explain it two ways. One, okay. the politician thing is that they think that will be a politician to go around and lie, to steal, to lie and steal. That's that, that the big definition of being a politician in Liberia. Not everybody wants to lie and steal. Yes, I want to live a comfortable life. I want to be rich, but I don't want to be rich by stealing money that I'm supposed to use to build schools 
all the money that's also used to build hospitals for my people, for them to be safe, to be healthy, and for them to be knowledgeable. You take those things and you use it, then you say you politician. You got politicians here in in America, though. But you see what that, the the, these have been. These have been the sources of the conflict that we experienced for which we are talking about peace and reconciliation and accountable today. Uh, how do we go about evolving or minimizing uh, these kind of behaviors from people in power? Good. That's a good question. So. You know, as I was so so now, it's still now we we, we still got to talk about rule of law. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got to talk about rule of law. The reason why we talk about rule of law is because, <clears throat> like for instance, you saw what happened recently. The the sentence or whatever is framed, whatever they're supposed to call a referendum. You're supposed to have a referendum in Liberia. To have a referendum in in, in, a, in in a nation, the people must be duly informed. They must be properly educated on the reasons why you want to have a referendum to make any changes in the constitution. So one of the things that we can do to to limit, to minimize, you know, that corruption and abuse of power. By, 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 by ignorant people who, who, who claim to be knowledgeable, but aren't knowledgeable and or that you know the knowledge, but you're not applying it. When you know the knowledge and you don't apply it, it's not knowledge. Because knowledge is supposed to be used, not to the detriment of the people, but to the, the com for the common good of society. What happened was that uh, we had knowledgeable people with PhDs and things that 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 uh, Bama, uh, uh, formula, then that, that passed or uh, uh, carried uh, brought or uh, whatever in Kwewampa through Sierra Leone to come and and, and, and wage a, a, a war. This is somebody that had all the opportunity. He served as a uh, minister of education, served as minister of foreign affairs, and this and that. Now you're bringing insurrection in the country because things didn't go your way those are the kinds of things that we're talking about and it's too much that nobody nobody's going to, to take that nonsense anymore it's too much ellen justin Sully did similar thing and she got elected and served and she's the darling of the west what do you say to that that yes it's the same thing you see now <clears throat> so what i'm saying the, the question you asked is that first we need civic education. Okay. You see, we need civic education. We need a platform. So somebody like me, for instance, I actually need uh, a slot on the radio stations in Morovia to be speaking to the people to educate them on their constitutional rights. That's the first thing because if you give the people knowledge, they'll be empowered, you know, to stand up for their rights. Most people don't stand up and they don't know what to do. And the people who are supposed to educate them, not educating them, you have the Ministry of, of, of Information, Cultural Affairs, and Tourism. That's its responsibility. That's its responsibility to educate, to, give, to provide civic education for the people, to educate the people on the government's policies, and also to provide a, a national consciousness through the programs and things that they run. That's that that's that's that do they not for them to, to have press conferences every day and and, and 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 rebuke you know write little press statements and all of that. That's not what that is for. You see? And 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 letterhood, if you were grateful and and, and, and and kind enough, he would have been one of those to call appointment to see how we can fix some programs that will help the people to 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 to, to be aware. He worked with me before with, 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 with that country artist theater. But this is some of the same thing we're talking about. People like those that you help and you bring up in life, they get a small position and they, and, and they take the position and put it all over their head and their noses and all of that and don't even pick up phone to say, oh, a, a prop, so, so, and so thing. The president appointed me to do this and that. You, the person that I train, supposed to tell the president, say, Mr. President, if we want to do so and so thing, to inform the people 
that the Baba is here. I worked with him before. Has he done it? No, he has not even picked up phone to say hello. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. But that maybe he maybe he knows what he's doing. Maybe the training you provided, he is enough for him to be able to succeed. Don't you? Yeah, think well, so? that's that's why he's trying to succeed by closing a radio station and infringing upon the constitutional rights of other people. I didn't teach him that one. So that's 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 why you always gotta be where you get your knowledge for you don't you the wrongs of the ladder that you use to clamp. You don't mess it up because when you're coming down, you will need them to come down, or else you will fall down like Humpty Dumpty. I didn't tell you say go to go to 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 put a, a radio station and and, 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 and macro manage the, the radio station and say don't 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 let so and so person talk and don't do this and that. Where do you see that kind of stuff? That's right. not part of the constitution. That's what I'm saying. You see, they're not following the law. Thank you, Dad. Folks in cyberspace, you are watching Focus on Liberia. Dr. Joe Baba is our guest, and we are discussing genuine reconciliation and accountability peace in Liberia. Dad, we read your article, and you have a lot of things packed in there. Mm -hmm. Gear towards the ultimate of reconciliation and accountability in Liberia. Let me read one line in there for you and then uh, you can provide some understanding here. Mm -hmm. Liberians are now being coerced by the status quo to glamorize corruption, mayhem and atrocity as acceptable norms of post-genocide Liberia. That this is loaded. You might even take a week to break this down, but please help us here uh, for a few seconds because there are a lot of things you said that we want to understand. What you mean by glamorized corruption, mayhem, atrocity as being the norms of <coughs> post-conflict Liberia, I mean post-genocide Liberia? Okay, I take you back to the law, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I take you back to the Constitution. When you commit a, a, a crime like a, a, a insurrection, Mm -hmm. or, or rebel activities. Mm -hmm. According to the Constitution, no rebel no warlord supposed to be in the House or representative or in the House or Senate. Hmm. That's glamorization of atrocities and mayhem. So you're telling the young people that they too should go take up arms and fight so they can be called warlords, so they can get position and be, uh, and be your lawmaker. The person that breaking the law is the one that making your laws. That's number one. That's number one. I, 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 you, you see how you thinking, how you're making you to think. I hope uh, you uh, other people to think like that. Which uh, part uh, of the constitution tells you that it's supposed to be like that? But you got them floating in in, in, in the legislature. You've got them floating in in the, in the government. You got some of them or, or, or there or, or in the judiciary. You got to clean it up. To clean it up, you got to follow the law. You got to they are they are accurate that uh, they were elected by their people. The constitution qualifies. That, yeah, they, they, yeah. that, 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 that that's not right because they are honor due rights. Let me tell you. Let me explain another thing to you that the like people need to understand. Okay. When you have an atrocity to the capacity to which we had in Liberia, where okay. over 250,000 people dead and all of that, you don't just jump and go hold elections. You don't just jump and go hold elections. You must provide socio or, or cultural interventions for the, for the citizens, uh, 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 psychological treatment, uh, uh, social, uh, 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 Social, uh, social, uh, uh, cultural uh, uh, interventions, uh, 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 therapy, this thing. Some of them need treatment. You got to do those things there first so that the people can come down and give them an opportunity for them to, 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 to have a, a closure to the atrocities that they experience. Not, people have not had closure, they just jammed them up. Squeeze them up. You must have election. Not nineteen ninety seven. Group group they have an election. And let me tell you too. Let me tell you something about uh, uh, America. Jimmy Carter comes to oversee 
and election after the people still got arms. Charles Taylor people still got arms all in Greater Liberia, as they call it, all that kind of thing there, and they hold the elections there. Now do rest. The people are not free, they're scared. If they don't vote for them, they will kill them. Are you they saying that the election of Charles Taylor, the decision made by the people was not the decision they would have made? No, because because you did not they did not provide the, the services that the, the people like when people still need those services they need psychiatric psychological or uh, uh, services counseling hmm. they need all of those things people who who, who watch their loved ones slaughter before them they never had any closure to it. then you're wondering why we are got plenty of uh, uh, so-called crazy people people with mental health problems in the place there. They can't mental have a problem because they're scared. They're scared of the people. They're people scared are suffering from uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. The people yeah. were traumatized. Yes, they are. Who provided the services? They didn't. And who's going to provide the services when you the same person that paid the money to 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 buy the guns to kill you up? You expect the person to 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 to, to free you mentally? They don't want to free you mentally. They want to enslave you, and that what happened. Ellen Johnson said he had the opportunity. She had that opportunity with UN support, with billions of dollars coming in the country for them to do that rehabilitation process to do it properly. Rehabilitation and, 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 and what's that? And vocational, technical, vocational training for those who were combatants so that they could learn some trade to, to, to successfully reintegrate into the Liberian society. They didn't do it, the money disappeared. They did not provide the services. They did not provide the institutions. When you have atrocity to that level, you must provide those kinds of interventions for the people so that they can calm down and you know uh, 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 regroup and, and come to their senses. They didn't provide that. She did not want to provide that because she want they they they, they want to keep the Liberian people in that. That, that mental slavery. So anytime when they get up to go talk anything, they can have people running behind them to say, they quit, they quit. And that, that's why you have part of the quit, they quit thing going on. That's why you see all the militancy going on in the place. I said to say, we're still in a war zone. If you're in a, a democratically elected uh, uh, administration, why should people or uh, political parties go to places women barrett? Warren Barrett and 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 the, the songs that were sung, uh, uh, that were sung during the war, that those songs are the one we're hearing at political gatherings, something That's like. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, what I'm saying because know. they have not been rehabilitated. So this is why the Cooker Tunnel Project is very important because we need to rehabilitate the people. We have to rehabilitate them to tell us that this is now war time. We got we got an elected uh, uh, president. We got an elected government, but 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 you know uh, uh, it's difficult. You know another thing. Let me tell you something that my father told me. This is somebody that maybe he stopped in the fifth grade, okay? But his wisdom. When I started going to LU, he asked me. He said, "Oh, so you're a student at LU now?" I said, "Yes." He said, you know that that school, that's the biggest school in Liberia? I said, yes, pa. He said, okay. He said, so where you going there to go line now? I said, well, pa, I'm going to go line book, line trade, do this and that. He said, okay. He said, you know what? I said, what? He said, book. Without God, it's not good book. He said, but book with God inside, that good book. And he was explaining to me, that when you you know when you have when you are knowledgeable you know things that the ordinary person doesn't know so that person who doesn't know the things that you know is depending on you depending on your wisdom for you to give me the right direction what kind of direction sawyer there and, and ellen johnson said he gave uh, our children to give them guns why she couldn't she got part of boys why she didn't give her guns to charles and robert and adama the 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 soya gave people guns as well no well i'm not saying that soya gave you but i'm saying that uh, with ellen justice Sally in particular 
mm -hmm. I'm saying that she paid money. She said she paid money for them to, to support the war. The money she paid, the guns that they gave, they bought, they didn't give them to their children. They did not give them to the children. These are the same children that will have grown into adults and they're calling uh, uh, calling them, uh, 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 what's that, Zoko, labeling them. So why would you do something like that? So that's what my concern is. You know, I'm not saying that America actually have her as their darling or whatever it is, but she needs to be, she needs, she needs to be brought to justice. And the other thing that I see, you know, every time I read the newspaper, they're grabbing these little children that that, that LNM recruited and gave guns to. They're grabbing them in in in, in what's that, Switzerland and this place, and they're trying to like we're trying like we don't want to do that. Are you kidding me? You are come for the LNM. If you're serious about trying warlords and all of that, all the little uh, uh, small small children, those people were small small children. And what the Liberian people need to understand is that if we talk about war crimes court, all the those young people that were child soldiers who are grown ups and this and that, you gotta be giving clemency and we gotta farm money to establish rehabilitation centers, vocational uh, uh, centers to help them to learn something, provide remedial education for them so they can be somebody else, to be somebody. They're not people that will be tried. They will be people that will be the 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 the, 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 the government witnesses to tell these us are, the, these are the victims and survivors, and yeah. they are the one they are they are grappling. They yeah, are the leaving those man. who bear the greatest responsibility for the crimes that were committed. And then they're walking around you you giving them Nobel Peace Prize, and you grabbing uh 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 what if what if Bonnie said that they they, they grab or uh, yeah in Philadelphia all these little small small children there. Don't you want they were small? They didn't do anything. They, they don't know about it. So if they, if they, if they, the, the international war crime code or whatever, they really want to grab people that did things or bad things in Liberia. They should come for Ellen them. That would they should come for? Not those children. Not the ones you are calling Zoko. The ones you are calling Zoko that sort of provide rehabilitation services for them. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's why that's why the, the peace process is like that. And, and that why is, you, 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 they you, do you. that because it provides a market mm -hmm. for them to have people that they can just pull by the noses. If you say you are a politician, if you say you are educated, you must use your education for the common good of the people. You must use your education for the common good of the people. Those young people that you call in so-called that you you depending on the way they're barret to see sequel sequel behind you if you if you if you provide them with services and provide them with vocational technical knowledge they can help to improve the country they can help with the agricultural sector they can help with building roads they can help with a lot of things and that's one of the reasons why i'm working with these college students uh uh, uh uh in the southeastern region and then in, in the Morovia area because they are very talented yes, and i told them i said well we will give you the support that we can give you so that you can exhibit your talents and hopefully by exhibiting your talents you'll be able to offer services to your community and it will provide some sort of empowerment so 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 i look up to people like ellen johnson salute and to make donations to these kinds of things, who so can work with the youth to rehabilitate them, for the youth to be the ones to go there and promote peace. These children want to promote peace. They want peace. They want peace. They want to travel around the country and promote peace and reconciliation. But when you when you when you call when you call a meeting for people, young people to come to talk about peace, you won't get about 10, you won't get about 15, 20 persons. But talk about political uh, uh, party. And, and 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 places where they gotta get to the days they quit, they quit it. thousands of them will go there and that's what these these, these so-called pol politicians want and that in one of your articles you wrote that liberians should stop living in an elusive world mm -hmm. what does that mean why are you living in an elusive world you know it's the same thing with uh uh cultural awareness okay cultural awareness number one i'm black 
who am I as a black man? I need to know. I should know. Number two, I'm Liberian. Who am I as a Liberian? I need to know. And to and, and to be one. Okay. Number three, I need to practice who I am and accept my way of life and not try to be somebody else. Now, what that brings us to, it brings us to the, the educational sector of the country. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the cultural part of it. The cultural part is where I told you who I was, who I was related to, who mm -hmm. my ancestors were, and all of that. So that's a good piece. The, the educational aspect of it is where in our schools, we must be talking about Liberia. Liberia should be the center of our discussions. The climate, how do we uh, uh, um, maximize the gifts that God has given us, that he has bestowed upon our nation as a people, as a nation? How do we, how do we harness these resources we talk about human resources. Look at the, the young people, very talented. I gave you an example. Uh, 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 I'm sitting here in the United States and I'm teaching uh, uh, college students from Tottenham University in Kipamas, the uh, college students from the University of Liberia, Cotton, and all of that. I'm teaching them. They're coming online and I see that. The, their level of education is far below their their status. Yeah, grade level. Yes, it's far below their status. Now we're standing, I still see that resilience in them. They they are eager to learn. But the, 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 the so-called politicians that you're talking about uh, 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 are depriving them of that opportunity to access to, to, to efficient education, okay? When you are not properly educated, there's a tendency, there's a danger for you to always want to be somebody else instead of being yourself. So you see the way how I speak and the way how I speak with confidence and without fear and all of that, I speak with confidence and without fear because I know who I am. I know what I want. I know the kind of impact I'm making on society and also the design and that what I'm doing is within the confines of the law to help the people to provide quality education. So the educational system is very important. And what did Ellen do? She decided to provide a messy education. She provided that messy education because purposely so that your, your mind will be messed up because the educational aspect of any society deals with the building, the construction of the mind. So if the mind is not properly constructed, it, it affects the life of the people. It subjugates you to mental slavery and inequality. So that's what I meant in that in our article. Because the, 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 the force with, it, with which I'm speaking and the, the consciousness, the self-consciousness that I'm displaying, not that many like parents can display that self-consciousness because you ask somebody born in a country, somebody born in Grand Gide, and I speak crown to the person, the person tells me, oh, uh, prof, I don't know how to speak that thing you. Your language is not that thing. God provided languages for every race so that they may be empowered to communicate, to live together, to interact with one another, to develop themselves. Language is, is, is one of the basis, one of the basic components that any people need in order for them to be able to develop as a civilized uh, 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 race. That's one of the problems we have in Liberia. Many people don't know how to speak the lingua franca of the nation, which is English. 
and we're supposed to be communicating with one another. So the lack of communication is one of the things that is 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 hampering the the the, the success of our peace project. I mean process, it, uh, despite the fact that we're not following the law. You're not following the law. You're forcing people on us that have committed crimes, that have killed our mom and our pa. You're forcing those people on us and, and giving them baby position when they come, we're supposed to salute them. For what? That's that, 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 that's, that's human rights abuse. The Liberian people are being abused openly. Yeah. And, and that, will you think this is one of the main impediment of this? Uh, closure that you talk about through yeah, it is. It the, is. The, the war I'm the war economic grieving. crime court i'm mm -hmm. there grieving i saw you i saw you slaughter my 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 my, my mom she was pregnant you slaughter you took the baby or you kill the baby all of that then you i i i i, I, I go to the courthouse and you sit not behind it the, the the place that you the judge do you know what that means to to to, to a victim they say oh lord don't tell me that I saw the judge. I saw the is, senator. I saw the representative. Yes. Then you eat, you eat official car, you go up and down. <clears throat> what does that tell the young people? What does that tell them? They are, they are, they, they, it's an abuse. It's an abuse. It's, it's a pure abuse. That's why you call it abuse. That's why we all in Liberia. That's abuse. And until we can we, we can bring those people to justice and, and, and put reputable people in power and all of that, they, 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 the place will not it will not go straight. They won't. Now you are also a proponent of the war and economic crimes code. Where are yes, we? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. I am. And the reason why I am is because I believe in rule of law. Another thing that, that librarians need to know about me is that I was born in the barracks. I saw, I grew up seeing those soldiers devoted to the constitution, protecting the constitution of the country and the flag of the Republic of Liberia. Every morning, so in the morning, four, 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 thirty students, those soldiers will get up in the morning, they'll blow that bugle. And the next thing you know, they stand up in the place and raise the, to hoist the flag. By six o'clock, they go there again to bring that flag down. And when we were kids, we'll play in the barracks and they bring, bring the flag that you, if you move, man, when they bring that flag down, so you'll start chasing you in that barracks, they boy, start running behind you to go and grab you. They <laughs> taught us to respect, they taught us to respect the national emblems of the country, of the nation. You can't began to, to pull those kinds of people or uh, uh, in power <clears throat> is to glamorize disrespect for the national ambulance of the country. You see, they disres disrespect the constitution, disrespect the constitution, and all of that. Folks in cyberspace, you are watching Focus on Liberia. We are in conversation, an exclusive interview with Dr. Joe Baba. He is a peace advocate, and we are discussing reconciliation and accountability in post-genocide Liberia. Uh, Dr. Baba believed that what we experience in our country is nothing short of a complete genocide. And he's saying, we have not come to closure with these crimes that were committed. We have people who brought the mayhem on the country in power, and he classified that as the glamorization of mayhem and atrocities. And he believed these are the impediments to reconciliation and nation building. He has established the Deconti Artist Theater in 1977, that is about 43 years ago, an institution he has managed for this long, trying to promote peace and prevent chaos in our country. That Let us show this here quickly. Uh, this is the work uh, you've been involved with. 
Um, this is the work you've been involved with. Uh, so this is the uh, the Deconti Artist or Theater Incorporated. As a reading here, the Maryland chapter. Uh, there was a Kuka uh, Tunnel Peace Project launched in that southeastern county of Liberia. Okay, These are let, pictures let, let, of students. Mm -hmm. Go yeah, ahead. Let, let, let's see those students there. Now okay. you see, you see those youth, they are college students, mm -hmm. college students from various ethnic groups because you mm -hmm. see, we talk about peace and reconciliation. Right. When we talk about peace and reconciliation, those who are proponents of, of peace and reconciliation must be of diverse backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So the students you see down there, uh, they are students from various ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. Some crew, some Grebo, some Crown, some uh, uh, Kisi, Pele, you know, like that. They all mix, you know, in, in the group. So, and also what you see is that irrespective of the fight they come from various ethnic groups, you see that they are together. Mm -hmm. That's the Kukatono spirit. You see, in, in, the, in diversity, there is strength. And, 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 and so when you promote, when you promote peace and reconciliation, it's important because then in that process, you are respecting the Pella man for who he is, the Crown man for who he is, the Vire man for who he is, the Congo man for who he is, you know, and also you, are, you have Liberia as the umbrella, you see, as the umbrella of all of these different peoples that have come together as one people. Now here is the uh, the, the the museum, the Harper City Museum building. Mm -hmm. In the Harper City Museum building, we have our our office. That's where mm -hmm. our office is going to be. So we are raising funds right now to to because the place uh, have been abandoned for quite a while. We got to clean the place. We got to furnish it. We're going to put computers. Uh, 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 Xerox machines, uh, get a generator and all of that, so that the students in that area, in that region, whether in Harper, in in um, uh, uh, what's that, Plebo, or uh, students from Tottenham University, or students, uh, let us one stay right there, yeah, because I will mm -hmm. talk about that. The mm -hmm. students from 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 the various high schools can always come there because uh, the Dati uh, Peace Advocates. They mm -hmm. are college students who are majoring in different fields. So hopefully when, when, when students, high school students have assignments that they need help with, they, will, they, they can go to our office, you know, at the museum building there, and, 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 the, and the college students who are peace advocates will assist them. Now, <clears throat> we're, we're trying to, the, 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 the Kukatana pro project is promoting peace and reconciliation because we want the young people to be aware of the the the, the, the divisive, the, the 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 vicious plans of Liberian politicians taking guns and giving them to other people's children, but not their own. They send their children abroad to school, and they come to take the poor people's children and give them these guns. You see, an entire salif among the, the, these children here. Do you see any any any, any, any tailor person here or in the, on the person? I mean, among these children, any brown skin here? Any Yuri? Anybody here like that? That's what Liberian people should be thinking. They should think. And what is so hurtful is that in the house of uh, the legislature, you got many of the same people who come from these areas where these children come from. And they set it down on, on, on the document that is supposed to, to, to ratify so that people who gave these children guns can be brought to justice for to move from this stage to go to the stage of peace and reconciliation. This is what we're supposed to be doing for the children. The children deserve pencil and paper to learn. Go back to the guns there, please. Go go back to the, the guns. Okay. This is not why you gave children. You don't give youth guns. It's that's that's a big, big crime. 
I don't know what a Liberians will uh, realize it. I hope this 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 uh, broadcast will help Liberians to see the difference. These children they are going to go die. They're not soldiers. They're not trained for combat. You're putting other people's children in harm's way so that you can reap millions of dollars that they will not even enjoy. Today, you're calling them Zogos. But these are the ones that put you in power. And what is so helpful is that these children, these Flomos and, and Twe and, 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 and Bobo and Kekula and, and, and so, so, and so, They've got their big, big brothers and sisters in the House of Representatives and in the Senate. And they're sitting now on a document that the international community say, okay, for you want to, if you want to resolve this matter, you have money here for you to go eat a few people. What, 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 what does the, the Liberian people want? They say the Liberian people want, they want a, a, a war crime code. They say, okay, fine, we, we, get, we prepare the document. And give it to the, the, the big brothers and sisters of these children. He gave, gave them the paper in the place. They said it now on the paper. Because the person who bought the guns for this for these uh, children to carry the guns went and gave them high salaries. So because of money, your own brothers and sisters died for nothing. The justice that they are yearning for. They cannot get that justice because you got you got huge salaries. They give you immunities and this and that. That's the situation. Then go back to the children with the, 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 the paper, please. Then after you created that chaos and, and if everything is, is, is upside down, now you don't want to provide efficient education for the children because you want them to grow up to be susceptible to your evil plans. So that when you call them again and give them guns, they will not question you, but they will take the guns and go do anything you want them to do. And so you provided, uh, 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 how you call it, messy education for them. This is why you gave children. So what happened in that previous picture, that's a criminal act. That's why we're talking about the formation of the war crimes code, because those people who gave those children those guns that, they, that made them to kill thousands of people they need to be brought to justice so that people will know that it's not right to do that letting them go free letting them ride the biggest cars letting them live, uh, 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 use all the resources of the country is is glamorizing you're making people to think that's the acceptable way of life and that's not the acceptable way of life in any civilized society. And what is a civilized society? A civilized society is a society in which the people believe in the rule of law. Justice. You cannot have peace when there's no justice. Train the children. Teach them to be patriotic. Teach them to be law abiding. You see the difference between the, the picture of these children and the picture of the, the, the children with the guns. That's that's these are things that when you bring when, when we take them to court, we will show them. These are evidences. Provide the children with knowledge so that they can be useful to help to develop the country. Don't constantly you gave them what you, you, you gave them what you expect for them to do. Then you wonder why there is a, a high rate of, 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 of what's that? Uh, of armed robbery. There's a high rate of illiteracy. Now, as Sony, that's another thing that is hampering the peace process because the, those who are in power, knowing the power of education, decided to deprive the youth of efficient education it, incre it, uh, it consequently increased the illiteracy rate. When you increase the illiteracy rate in any nation, the people are susceptible to any kind of wicked device that you put before them because they don't understand. Most of them cannot even speak English. So they, they waver. 
they live in an elusive world you see so that's that's that, that's that's very very important and then using culture mm -hmm. because earlier you talking about some of us uh, some people suffering from identity crisis yeah people don't know themselves they, you know and so it is is also a problem so mm -hmm. we see culture you know being shown here uh what's going on here first of all and how you using culture as one of the intervention mechanism uh to to build the national consciousness that you talk about okay now the national consciousness that we're talking about number mm -hmm. one you know uh man as a whole Mm -hmm. there are there are several several components of our our existence mm -hmm. of our being okay we have the spiritual we have the physical we have the metaphysical okay <clears throat> every every human being you know has some knowledge of a supreme being the existence of a supreme being somewhere so there are times when even when we sit by ourselves to to try to meditate you know we we we, we do so because we want to be in sync with the unknown mm -hmm. so the the idea about religion is is one of those basic components of man's existence so that's why the Europeans, the colonizers, realizing the importance of religion, they used religion to conquer Africans. Mm. They used religion to, to, to reorientate the mindset of the African people. So that, for instance, uh, 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 um, for me, I know that I come from a, 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 a Jewish background. Mm -hmm. the religious background the way how our ancestors worshiped and all of that you know you, i see you smiling you know and, and most most people <laughs> when as black as i ever i see i'm jewish you know mm -hmm. laugh like hell and all of that but it's <laughs> it, it's good to laugh because mm -hmm. you know sometimes you're laughing out of ignorance mm -hmm. you know uh, whereas i'm talking about things that i learned about my people and the way of life that they live but again what that shows is is the is is the misinformation, the misinformation that you are fed with in the school system, the misinformation that you are fed with in, in, in when when you seek you know to to align yourself with the spiritual world around you. So so so, show that picture again, please. So oh, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead. How, why I find it? Go ahead yeah so 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 in that picture what we were showing was that we were celebrating the 40th anniversary of decorative artist theater at uh, at the african cultural center in philadelphia and we had a, a, a an african jewish celebration <clears throat> you know people from the southeastern region of liberia the crown the crew the grable you know or uh, basa they have that, that that background, that Jewish background, where our ancestors had high priests. And the high priests used to intervene between the people and God. So whenever the people wanted, you know, a successful harvest, or when there was some kind of a famine in the land, or any kind of, you know, epidemic or whatever it was, they will go to the high priest to make sacrifices and the high priest will, will, will make the sacrifices pray to god and succeed for them they will build altars and all of that so it's the same same process that you see the catholic church copied that process you know from from the africans and so they the so-called jewish people and all of that so here in this photo uh we have an altar set up in the uh, on the altar there are candles mm -hmm. and those candles there were different colors and all that first of all we got we got a red the white and the blue and the blue the yeah. red white and blue represents our national colors mm -hmm. so we were we were we were celebrating thanking god for 40 years of existence of of 
of an African uh, of decorative artist theater, but we're celebrating it through our Jewish custom. So, <clears throat> so we had candles there, they were red and blue, but then we also have 15 candles. So in the audience, we will call somebody from Nima to come and light the Nima candle. Somebody from Grand Crew will come and light the Grand Crew candle. Somebody from Sano will come and do the same. Somebody from Monserrado. So we had those 15 candles. Each person came, each person represented a county and came to light a candle. <clears throat> you talk about reconciliation, uh, peace and reconciliation. It must be inclusive. Inclusivity is an essential aspect of peace and reconciliation. So look at your the government, for instance, the formation of the cabinet and all of that. What, what people do you see in that cabinet that represent, you know, the different ethnic groups of the country? The formation of a national government, a, a, a cabinet and mm -hmm. all of that, uh, um, the leader must be cautious in whom they are appointing to those positions so that the various ethnic groups can see themselves represented in the government. That's part of the reconciliation process also. It is, it, it is sad and, and also um, if you have different political uh, parties, it's also important that it is not necessary that you always put all your, your partisans in a position mm -hmm. because you won the election. That's not reconciliation either. You see, reconciliation is where, okay, <clears throat> we want an educator, someone who is good at education, but he's not a CDC member. He's from another party, Liberty or UP or whatever it is. For the sake of the country, for the love of the country, for efficiency, for reconciliation sake, we will take that person from, 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 from unity party and give him that position because you know he will, he will deliver. That's what you want. You don't want to go take your, uh, 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 your, 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 your partisan who doesn't know the difference between A and bullfrog. Whom are you doing it to? You're doing it to yourself because your administration will not be efficient. And if your administration is not efficient, when time comes, the people will make a decision whether or not you should be re-elected. And, and knowing that knowing that you didn't do well, now you 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 want to, 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 to fight and you want to, to stay in power by force. That's how the confusion starts. That's how it starts. And that's that's what's going on. That's what we're trying to prevent. Because that 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 it was very it was a scary thing when the when this the that by election for them to go squeeze a, a, a referendum thing in between it. Right. We try to kind of change constitution, all of that. We look at it a lot and say, no. No, children, it can't happen like that. You can't have your cake and eat it. Your first six years you got for her, you better deliver. Don't be pregnant, you must deliver. You must see you deliver first. And there gotta be elders like myself in the land who will stand and tell and, and tell this children that when they do something wrong to tell them say it's wrong. That's how you run a country. People who everybody can be yes sir, yes sir person. And those of us who speak the truth, we, we, it's not that we hate anybody, it's because we love you. We want you to succeed. Why are you picking up the phone to consult with your elders anyway? That's another issue that is affecting the country. Because when people get in power, if you, oh, well, Joe Baba, if I call Joe Baba, well, Joe Baba, we, we say this, we say, no, I will not say this and say that. I will tell you the truth. If you want me to help you, I will help you. I can help you deliver it. Well, that uh, job, maybe they don't want the truth. Yeah, but they don't want the truth. Then if they don't want the truth, then they can't stay there. You, you ain't want truth. You ain't want to deliver. You can't stay there. You can't have your cake and eat it. We want good hospitals. We want good roads. 
We want cool education, schools. When we can't provide those things, there you go. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Folks in Cyber Space. You are watching Focus on Liberia. We are in an exclusive interview with Dr. Joe Bagba. We are discussing general reconciliation, accountability, and peace as the way forward for post genocide Liberia. Dr. Joe Baba is a peace advocate and has been preaching this message of reconciliation, accountability in the land as the only and only way to building a nation that can be that glorious land of liberty by God's command, if you like, that we all want. Because he said earlier, education with no God in it is empty. Yeah. So we need a country that will have God in it also. Yep. And when he's talking about God, he's not talking about you going and kneeling down, doing the things that God wants you to do. If God say you might apply the law, apply the law irrespective of where or who uh, the law affects. Mm -hmm. Excellent conversation with Dr. Joe Baba. Dad, let read some comments. Okay. Uh, folks have been watching and paying attention. You've been dropping knowledge. Let hear what they are saying. All right. hear what they are saying. Uh, let me remove this on the screen first of all so we can be able to see the comments. Uh, this one is from Moe District, that is Gaka Moe. The great Dr. Baba, we are listening. Mm -hmm. This one is for Fumo, um, Fumba Toure. Sorry if I'm uh, butchering your name, I think it's Fumba Toure. Mm -hmm. We that know history and culture of Liberia, who the we? Ah, I don't know. Uh, Gakon again, the Eugene, that Eugene, that Eugene Fagon star, he refused to write, so hosting Facebook live talking affairs at the ministry replaces rating reports from each government entities. Uh, we have Mr. Logan is watching. And he reacted, he said, you are absolutely right, Joe. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one is from uh, Mr. Logan again. You must use your education to improve lives. That is when you were talking about education for the young people. You don't give them guns. You give them pen and paper so that they can read and write for their minds to be in the right place to help develop their nation. And this one is from Goa he was referring to himself and like-minded people this person james paul thanks dr baba uh mr logan again this man is making great and deep sense and many more uh logan again any of the students from nima oh uh, yes Barbara yes, said yes. That. yes that's Some of those students that. from nima there's a long one here from uh uh, Martin Brown, in the absence of total justice, our country will remain in a virtual cycles. Those guys that committed heinous crimes should face justice and exonerate themselves. See, what we fail to do for ourselves, that's what foreign countries are doing for us. Norway, Norway that's has that's just arrested a fellow from Sierra Leone that fought in the Liberian Civil War. Dr. Baba, I think he has a point there. And mm -hmm. uh, let me see this one. Logan is basically here. Thanks, Joe. You don't give children guns. Uh, let you have from uh, Saba, serious crime. How can we derive the sources? This devastation caused Liberia a great setback in terms of life and development. Uh, see, Seba is still busy. Serious crimes. How can we derive? I think it's the same statement being mm -hmm. uh, reposted there. Uh, Seba again. And what? Bullfrog? I don't know. The person is laughing there. Maybe we're not yet to pull Bullfrog in the taxi. Jimmy mm -hmm. Eastman at a few years of focus on Liberia writes there has to be accountability. That is the only way we can deter future and further abuse of abuse. our people. Yep, he agrees with you there, Doc. Uh, this one is from Saba. Rabbi, I must be in agreement with the judiciary 
with the judiciary is sending the referendum back to the legislative branch, but the decision was to review and amend the referendum and postpone the election process until everyone received the message that was wrong and they have put us backwards for development. There are a few comments from people who are getting some knowledge from you, your reaction. Um, uh, it's good. First, let me let me answer the question of someone that said, uh, mm -hmm. any students from from NIMBA? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, uh, um, yes, there, there are students from NIMBA. The our statistics shows that, um, about well, all of the students from NIMBA are, are minor, okay, because uh, we, we do statistics, you know, with respect to uh, who 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 is participating in the Kuka Tunnel project. Mm -hmm. In the Kuka Tunnel project, we have, uh, we have over, uh, what's that, maybe like seven to eight minor students, mm -hmm. college students now from different, and they're doing excellently well. But we don't have any guild or, or student yet mm -hmm. in that. Uh, we have, <clears throat> because we have a, a branch in, in, in Maryland, mm -hmm. we have uh, um, about 10, to 15 uh gribble mm -hmm. you got about five you know to eight uh, crews four four uh, crowns you know like that people from the southeastern region mm -hmm. we got pele 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 is represented we got kisi we got a lot of kisi uh students from lofa we got about maybe maybe eight or ten of them kisi and we got loma you know, a, a part of the organization. So, so it's, it's building, it's building. And, and, and also I want to take this time to thank um, those who are uh, donating to the project. Mm -hmm. And also we're taking uh, uh, statistics of those who are donating, those who are donating um, to the, the, the Cook Tunnel project, you know, um, right now, Grand Crew is in the lead. We have we have uh, uh, more people from Grand Cru County who have donated to to the project. Then the second group of people are people from Grand Jide, and then we got uh, people from Grand Bassa, you know, like that. So what it also shows what what, what we are seeing also is that uh, uh, the Southeasterners, mm -hmm. but most of our donors are from Southeastern Liberia. They either crew or the grebo or the crown basa you know like that so we, we have that 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 statistic right now but um what i want to encourage everybody out there is that um we need more support because one we want to be able to to have an air time where i can teach the history and culture of liberia in liberia not for me to sit here in america and and, and just talk once in a while on on a, a, a media like this but for for us to have a radio drama series that educates the liberian people on their constitutional rights to provide civic education for them to 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 educate the liberian people to let them know how we are related and coming to that let me say something because somebody asked whether there were students from nimba now, one thing that uh, I want for Liberians to understand is that there's uh, an interrelationship among the various ethnic groups. If you take the, the ethnic groups from the from the um, the western, I mean the east, the southeastern Liberia, you will see that that the Crews, the Crowns, the Grebos, the Basas, they are all related. They are blood blood relationship, I'm not just talking about just intermarriage, but I'm talking about blood relationship. And based on our traditions and all of that, uh, uh, our ancestors, you know, the information they passed on to us, they were brothers, children. And that's one of the reasons why they live close uh, in proximity with one another. They live in proximity with one another because uh, 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 they are you know, or relative, and that's how our people lived in the past. The, the, the families would live closer together. So when they were when they were traveling and coming to Liberia, 
they decided to 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 to, to stay together because their, their parents told them that wherever you go, you stay together and protect one another. So that's how come you see that whole group on that side, they are related. That's also why there's a similarity, you know, among our languages and you know, all of that. Okay. <clears throat> when it comes to the, the mandate speaking people, they also have their own relationships like that too. So the Va, the, the Loma, the Kisi, the Bandis, and the and the Kulas and all these people, they have the relationship, they 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 have that blood relationship as well as intermarital relationship as well. Then the last time and uh, I was talking with um one of my students i didn't even know this fellow was even gola i mean not gola but, but Gio in, in in the class they didn't know he was a damn person because in the classroom when i'm teaching i'm teaching i'm looking at students i'm not looking at what ethnic group you come from or all of that so this is somebody i taught in college uh, uh, uh almost 20 years ago and 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 and, and he's telling me that I'm uh, I'm divisive or what I write is divisive, and and I was very shocked, you know, for somebody like that who is supposed to be educated to, to think like that, and and I, the first thing I ran to my mom, I said, well, because he feels that I'm crying, so crying and and kill people are supposed to be enemies. Is that what he's trying to propound? You know, so the first thing that I told him, we, we, uh, and first of all, he said a big kill, but he ain't got no kill name. He got part of Western name, which is the same elusiveness I'm talking about. I would not give, I got give name, my name to my, which is a give name that uh, a, a give chief gave to my father when he was born. The give chief was friendly with my grandfather. So in the our tradition, the friend they come, you know, bring a gift and say, well, this child and my child. You know, so he, he, he took my father to be his child and name him to my. And Toma in Gyo means the one who replaces the person. The chief said, when I die, he will take my place. So that's why the T is for in my name. So I'm crying, I got Gyo name. You Gyo, you don't got no Gyo name. You got part of Western names and things. And you want to tell me about Gyo. You know? So these right. are the kinds of things that, are, that, that, that people should stop doing, especially those who, who got a level, a level of education. We should look at the individual you know, the, the content of the character and the contribution they're making in society and not try to undermine. That's another thing that is affecting the, the, the Liberian peace process. It, what is affecting the Liberian peace process is that <clears throat> Joe Baba is supposed to be crown. So he, he really had to do. What, 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 what's there, what's the similarity between Baba and Do? What the connection there? What 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 I gotta do with Joe? Joe was friendly up with Kuren Park, then he was friendly with Joe Baba. You saw me with Joe in the mansion, or you saw Kuren Park and Joe in the mansion. You know, so when people when 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 you do that, you are depriving the Liberian people of the truth and knowledge that they need to learn from me. Not you're not doing it to me. You think you're doing it to me? Because you want to put everybody in one in one basket. No, I'm, I'm not one of those that you put in one basket. The person also to come to that thing where the person was saying that I was divisive. I try to make it clear to the individual that I live what I preach. You say I'm divisive. I'm married to an American Liberian woman. We've been married almost uh, going to 40 years. I didn't marry a woman. I married a miracle Liberian woman. Y'all can't get along, but my wife and myself can get along. So the problem that you're looking for, how can you, can Liberians live together? Whether that Congo and country, how can they live together? I got an answer. I can tell you how we can live together by respecting one another. That's how you live together. That's how my wife and myself live together. She and my uncle, like, I'm, I'm sort of big country, but we live it together. We got children who are who got American Liberian blood and they got country blood. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so very much, uh, Dad. Uh, we are at the end of our broadcast. Those who have been following us, we want to say thank you. 
uh, Dr. Baba has been trying to provide basic and unique understanding about how we uh, can achieve. Before we, yeah. before we end the broadcast, mm -hmm. the aspect with the United States, we got. I got to. I got to make that clear to everybody so they understand. Yeah, and yeah. I'll, uh, I'll give you the opportunity to do that, and I want you to close with that. So okay. we have been discussing uh, genuine reconciliation and accountability and peace in post-genocide Liberia. Dr. Baba wrote a paper, an article uh, that talked about how we can move forward, the things that are impeding the peace and reconciliation and as well as accountability in Liberia. Uh, in that paper, he wrote, Liberians are now being coerced by the status quo to glamorize corruption, mayhem, and atrocity as acceptable norms for post-genocide Liberia. He also wrote in an article, we need research-based project that is aimed uh, to liberate Liberians from mental slavery and inequality. And he is using the Kuka Tono Peace Project to practice what he's preaching. Uh, and also he said the Kuka Tono Peace Project aspires to awaken all Liberians to stop living in an elusive world and to stop being robots of deceptive demagoguery, and he was able to explain that. The Kukatona Peace Project is very critical to the reconstruction of the Liberian society as well as the mindset of post-genocide Liberian victims and survivors. We are talking about, he talked about breaking closer to the conflict that we experience. He talked about, you know, victims now seeing their perpetrators as their senators, as their representatives. In some cases, maybe their judges and even presidents uh, this thing is traumatizing. We can't get the peace that we want if we're not applying the rule of law to hold these people uh, accountable. He talked about we need social cultural intervention as well as advocacy that is centered on our own history and culture. We need to know who we are as a people. If we don't know, it might be challenging for us to get to where we are going. Dr. Baba also talked about the goal is to promote uh, peace and reconciliation among Liberians and to create cultural awareness and national consciousness and, un and unity among survivors of the Liberian genocide. So, folks, we want to say thank you for following us here. But Dr. Baba got one more thing to share with us. He was being brief, so just bear with us. And uh, once he's done with that, then we'll be closing the broadcast. Dr. Baba, we have a new U.S. ambassador who we'll talk about the uniqueness of the traditional relationship between Liberia and the United States. We saw what happened at the Capitol. You are saying, oh, we had that thing before. You were more like uh, glamorizing about this. Now mm -hmm. he has come to your door. How yes. do we go forward given what we know? Well, um, on behalf of the Liberian people, mm -hmm. I want to appeal to President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, the United States Congress, for them to please uh, bring the uh, uh, HR 1055 to revive it on the floor and to see how it can be implemented with respect to pressurizing uh, 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 the, 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 the we are government to, to honor, honor the request of the Liberian people to establish a war crimes court in Liberia. I'm saying this because, uh, one, the, the chief perpetrator of the Liberian genocide broke jail in the United States of America, in Massachusetts. Uh, here in the United States of America, if anybody breaks jail, they are arrested immediately and brought to justice. So we feel that it was a covert uh, 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 undertaking by the United States government to undermine the Liberian democracy. And uh, I bring to light the, the, the event that took place on November 6th here in the United States is what in the Liberian palace we call Kugu Jumuku. If you're not inside, you not know. I, I, I'm not saying that it was a good thing that the, the insurrectionists will go and bulldoze their way in the capital here in the United States. But what I'm saying is that it provides an opportunity and experience for the American government and people to see what happens 
when people, when, when insurrectionists in other countries undermine their democracies and they receive support for the United States of America. So or, or in other words, they're not arresting Charles Taylor and, and making him to consequently cause the death of over four, uh, uh, what's that? Well, 450,000 250, people that was undermining the democracy of Liberia. So the, 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 the American ambassador, Mr. McCarthy, uh, Michael McCarthy, who is now in, in Liberia, and I hope he's listening to this broadcast. I would like to appeal to Mr. McCarthy to, on behalf of the Liberian people as well, you know, speak to the United States government and the president and vice president, because the vice president, good thing, she's a lawyer. She believes in rule of law and the United States people believe in rule of law. When the insurrectionists uh, did what they did, they were arrested. They were not supported and given Nobel Peace Prize. So we don't expect that people who, who committed crimes, heinous crimes in our country, will be supported by the Biden government. And we want the, the ambassador to please take note of this. We also, I also want to appeal to the president of Liberia, Mr. Uh, uh, Weir, President Weir, that he should please do whatever he can to follow the instructions of the Liberian people to establish a war crimes court. And there's no excuse about no money business. If we can spend money on all the different things we're spending money on, we should spend money on reinstituting genuine democracy and rule of law in Liberia. And if it calls for us to raise our dollars and cents to, to help the government to establish the war crimes court, we are willing to do that. I would be the first person to make my donation towards that. Mr. McCarthy wrote uh, during his uh, presentation of his letter of credence, he wrote in a quote, uh, he refers to Liberia, quote unquote, as a country with which the United States shares a storied history and cherishes uh, um, was an enduring bonds of friendship, partnership, and family. <clears throat> I agree. We do have a storied uh, uh, history and, and we cherish our enduring bonds. Cherishing our enduring bonds means that moving forward, all those who committed atrocities based upon the release of Mr. Charles Taylor that caused all of these things, that the United States will eventually give us that moral, material support that we need for us to bring this carnage to an end in Liberia. This my final plea to the ambassador, to the government of the United States of America, and also to President Weah, that we need that to, to, to take place. And also we will do all we can to lobby with the government of, of the United States of America to make sure that justice is served to the Liberian people. We're tired of being in a limbo where our country is just going backward and people feel insecure, it, it cannot continue any longer. That's my appeal to all of you. And all of you Liberians out there, you got to stop being sago fans. Stand up for your rights and speak the truth. Speak the truth and stop being sago fans. Stop selling your rights and our rights. But let us all work together as one people so that we can redeem our country and live a better life. I thank you so much for the opportunity to have a conversation with you today. And I hope that you will donate to the decorative artists of Kukatana Peace Project so that I can provide civic education on, on local radio stations in Liberia for the betterment of our country. And the, the, the Ministry of Information Corporate Affairs is more than welcome to contact me, Ledger Who Renning, you know who I am. You can contact me. Anything we can do to help the government to educate the people and to promote the policies of the government will be more than willing to assist in that direction. The Ministry of Education, you also can contact me. We can help with training teachers and also providing local textbooks that can be culturally relevant to the education of our children. Thank you so much, Sony and uh, the management of Focus on Liberia for the opportunity to speak to all of you today.
that uh baba thank you so very much folks i think uh we can all agree we got a lot from dr baba he has been on this message of peace reconciliation and accountability how we should get the young people of liberia pen and pencil to transform themselves into uh, civilized adults who can be able to take over when we are all gone folks reconciliation reconciliation accountability accountability and peace and these things can be achieved by us and that baba is saying we should look ourselves in the eyes to get rid of the impediments by no by electing people who brought the war in the first place people you elect who will not do right by you and keeping them in power it is like trying to go around the cycle over and over when the solution is right there. Liberia is not short of good people. No. Go for and, the good and people. And that can be achieved through through the promotion of the rule of law. Yeah. Through the promotion of the rule of law, yeah. that can be achieved. Folks, thank you so very much for watching. Dr. Baba, thank you so very much. I think we have to do this again if there's a way we can make it as regular as possible so that the message can go across to Liberians for us to build that national consciousness that you talk about, mm -hmm. then we need to do it because if we lack that national consciousness, we would not get to that promised land. That glorious land of liberty would not be ours by God's command. No, it will not be without mm -hmm. that national consciousness. On that note, folks, the song says we are all Liberians. It is the patriotic songs that unites us. That song is calling you, in spite of his all, like use the rule of law, hold the wrong guys or the bad guys accountable, bring the good guys to the forefront so that we can represent our country and leave behind a country that we can be proud of. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your day and bye bye. Yep. We all are the